been waiting for this DVD to arrive for about two and a half months. Um, and I think I've built it up in my own mind too much to the point where I was expecting absolutely everything and obviously it didn't quite live up to the heights. Um, anybody that's watched this event will probably say the same thing. I think that it's it, there's nothing terrible on it, but it just felt flat at times um, and just didn't quite live up to my my expectations personally I don't know about anybody else but I had really high hopes for this event so I pre-ordered the DVD and obviously I've been waiting for it and and I, sh I probably built it up a bit too much in my own mind so when I actually got around to watching it obviously it didn't quite live up to where I thought it would be but the crowd were very much I don't know hit and miss on this show I thought they felt really flat at times but then they sort of got into it and some of the chants were a bit weird but um <clears throat> yeah like I say there's nothing terrible on, on the show in my opinion but a lot of the matches just just fell short of the mark that they should have been hitting in my opinion so just go through them uh, I'm going to butcher probably a lot of the names here I know I think I know almost all of the of the Japanese talent apart from two um I've not watched Dragon Gate or Noah or anything like that for at least a year now so um, any of the newer guys I'm not really familiar with at all so um, but anyway the first match was the the Fighting Taylor Boys versus Famous B and Chris Cadillac this was one of the matches that fell flat for me certainly um, it was like I say it was nothing horrendously bad it was just okay it was just there and it's not your normal PWG opener Um the eight-person tag, in my opinion, should have opened this show uh, to really get things kick-started. But, yeah, as I say, there was not much chemistry. I'm quite a big fan of the Taylor boys. I think they certainly should be in uh, in contention for the tag titles this coming year at some point. But I don't know. Yeah, not much chemistry between these two teams. A few botches and nothing really to write home about. Um, it was okay. That's that's literally all you, all I can say. Really, there's nothing nothing stand out about it. Nothing horrible. Um, so yeah, no, I'll not spend too much time talking about it and move on to BB Hulk versus Jimmy Susuma, uh, which followed again in the same vein. I thought this was flat again. Um, it was slow and methodical to start with for the first sort of seven or eight minutes. Really picked. Up, it did pick up in the last you know, four to five minutes or so and the end and the ending sort of sequences were were quite good, but the the opening of the match was slow and not what you'd expect to see out of Japanese talent. I've never been a big fan of BB Hulk. He is he is one guy that I do know. Um uh, I've seen Jimmy Susuma a few times, uh, not a not a whole lot. Uh, obviously I've seen a lot of BB Hulk. I've never really been been a fan of his work, but um yeah so this was one of the matches that I was actually least looking forward to, and to be honest, it it went how I thought it would go. It was, it was pretty. It was. It's just BB Hulk doesn't. I don't know. In my opinion, he doesn't really typify like Japanese the Japanese style. He's a lot of his the early part of the match, as I say, was slow and and just for want of a better word, just pretty boring, really. But um, we'll move on to the Young Bucks versus Stevie Richards and Harry Smith. Um, uh, of, of course, fresh out of WWE, getting released by WWE. Um, I'm trying to think of his name in WWE now. Uh, the Heart Dynasty with Tyson Kidd. Um, I can't, I can't remember his name, but you know what I mean. Uh, part of the tag team, the Heart Dynasty. Uh, it was just been released. Um, I actually really liked this match. I thought it was short. It was quite short. Um, typical Young Bucks offense. Lots of kicks. Lots of high impact. Um, sort of physical offence and Harry Smith looked absolutely tremendous here I mean obviously I've only been exposed to him in WWE where he's obviously restricted to all hell but I never knew he could do some of the things that he was doing he was doing like sort of um, belly to belly suplexes overhead belly to belly suplexes just flinging the young bucks around like they were rag dolls super kicks and you just think you look at him and the size of him, he's got the absolute perfect look for a WWE main event and talk about a waste of talent. I mean, fucking hell. If if this doesn't sum up what's wrong with WWE at the moment, then I don't think anything does does better than this, really. A young guy, fresh, that should have been slowly built up the card and 
he's just released and tossed to one side. Um, is he did he absolutely impressed me very much in this match. Um, along with David Richards, of course, who d- was his normal, like intense self. But Harry Smith stole this match for me. Definitely, he was big time over with the crowd. Um, and as I say, I think he did a standing vertical suplex that where he held. Um, one of the young books, I can't remember which one it was, where he held him for about 45 seconds, I think, um, before bringing him down, like, in, in a type of brain buster that was immense. And, yeah, like I say, absolute massive miscalculation of judgment by WWE letting this guy go, in my view. He, he looked tremendous here. So, um, young books went over, as I'm sure they would have done. Um, I was certain they would have done before the match. They had to really. Harry Smith. I don't know if he's going to be hanging around. Um, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I imagine he probably commands a decent amount of money to to wrestle on the independent circuit. So I wouldn't expect him to be hanging around the independents very long. But uh, WWE should should definitely reassess and, and get this guy back and push him as a singles single star. Definitely, he's got the look. He's over. He's got that natural baby face charisma and. Some of his high impact moves are, are absolutely brilliant. So, um, moving on to one of my favourite matches of the night, actually, um, Naruki Doi versus Willie Mack. <coughs> um, I think I've said before when I was reviewing, I think it was Steam Wolf. Um, Willie Mack's probably my favourite guy in in PWG at the moment. Um, future world champion, gotta be this year at some point. He needs to be elevated to, into. I was going to say a program, but obviously they don't really have PWG. Don't really do storylines and programs, but he needs to be a consistent challenger or main event player for that belt for the heavyweight title. Definitely, he's got every. In my opinion, he's got everything. He's obviously not. He's not got the um, six pack like defined uh, tone look that other people have got, like Davy Richards or what have you. But he's got obviously. If you know anything about PWG, you know the background to Willie Mack, that he used to be a fan and it basically inspired him to start wrestling. Um, just being a fan of the, of the product it inspired him to start competing and get in the ring. So he's got that connection straight away with the fans. It's there straight away. There's, there's no need to build anything up uh, with him. It's there straight away. And he's got that... You can sympathise with him. He's got that sort of baby face quality that where you can root, root behind him just because of how he looks and his charisma... Um, I just love everything about him. I love his gimmick um, with the afro and and the whole like colourful ring attire and all that stuff. He's definitely the breakout star in my opinion. Um, so yeah, this was a cracking match. I, I like Nuruki Doi. I've always have done um, ever since I started watching him in Dragon Gate USA. And um, yeah, this was a great match. Absolutely fantastic. Some high impact stuff towards the end of the match, and Willie Mack went over. Um, with a chocolate thunder bomb, I think he calls it spinning power bomb, which which is a brilliant name for a finishing move. And yeah, I think the crowd after the match, um, obviously it doesn't show a lot a lot of the reaction after the match. It cuts cuts to the next match pretty much straight away. But I think they were chanting future champion, and it's absolutely bang on. This guy, in my opinion, I've been saying it for a couple of months now that he is the standout star of PWG or the breakout star at least. So uh, moving on to a match that I fucking loved um, and I can't stress how much I love this match the eight person tag team match um, Peter Avalon Demas 316 who was the uh, the midget wrestler uh, for the heel team Ray Rosas and Joey Ryan versus Cedric Alexander B-Boy Candice LeRae and Mascarita Dorado who was the midget wrestler for the for the babyface team um, this was absolutely fucking brilliant if you've if you're going to watch one match, I would say, what? well, there's obviously the main event, uh, but this match, I absolutely loved it. I do love these comedy six-man or eight-man tag, in, well, I say eight-man, intergender. Obviously, Candice LeRae normally takes part in these matches, but I just love these matches that PWG put on. Normally, they open the show, um, but yeah, this was, this was funny as fuck, man. Um, Peter Avalon is, he absolutely kills me. Just his mannerisms in the ring... The way he handles himself, the way he works the crowd, um, the way he covers Candice LeRae, it just has me in stitches every time. And also, there was a bit in this match where uh, it was the heel midget again, Demas three sixteen. He was in the ring with the with the midget Lucha for the babyface team, which is Mascarita Dorado, and he 
just sort of tossing him about. And Colt Cabana, who was on co-commentary, was absolutely pissing himself, just openly bursting out laughing, saying he's tossing him around like a bag of cement on a um, on a building site. And I was in stitches, man. It was fucking hilarious. And um, Cedric Alexander looked really good here as well. I think along with Willie Mack, he could be the, the young breakout star of the year. I really like a lot of the things that he does. So hopefully they can get him out of this these sort of comedy matches and get him into a more serious spot on the card because he's definitely got something, Cedric Alexander, without a doubt. So, But yeah, absolutely fantastic way to break up the show because obviously the first four matches were were quite sort of serious and it was a good way to, to just just break the show up halfway through to, to stick this in. Like I say, normally I think they open with these type of matches, but um, yeah, it was fantastic, fantastic stuff here. Um, moving on to the tag team match between the Blood Warriors, which is uh, Seema and um, Ricochet versus Rockness Monsters, Johnny Goodtime and Johnny Yuma. This was okay. Um, neither of their, neither of team's best work by Country Mile, to be honest with you, but... It was it was okay. It couldn't really be bad. I mean, both these teams, uh, there's a lot of talent in this match for definite. So, um, I love Shima. I think his personality is, he's probably got the best personality of all the Japanese wrestlers that come over um, for Dragon Gate USA and and Ring of Honor and um, and PWG. I think Shima's got the best, certainly the best, the most charisma and the best um, the best sort of connection with the fans. Well, saying that, probably Tazawa maybe. But certainly Shima knows how to work the crowd and stealing the Rock Nest Monsters bandanas and wearing them throughout the match obviously got a decent reaction. and Some decent stuff here. I think Ricochet was underutilised in this match. Um, that was the one thing that I would say. I think if you're going to bring Ricochet in, you may as well have him go balls to the wall and just like do all his no- normal offence. But he just seemed a bit... So it was sort of the reins were on him a little bit. I don't know, I'm not quite sure why. Obviously, if he was injured or something, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, he didn't do all his normal high flying stuff that you normally see from him. But like I say, decent match. Um, not great deal to talk about really. Moving on to uh, Masaki Mochizuki. I've probably butchered that like fuck. But uh, versus Roderick Strong. Uh, this is um, another guy that I've never seen before. Uh, Mochizuki. I've, I've actually never never seen him wrestle once, I don't think. But um, this was a pretty good match. It was basically what I expect out of, what, well, what you'd expect out of Roderick Strong, really. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing tremendous, but just his, your typical Roderick Strong match. And when I saw that he was going to be against a Japanese guy, I knew it would be a pretty hard-hitting like style of match, and that's exactly what it was, really. Just... Yeah, it was what it was. I mean, I don't know. There's nothing much, like I say, a lot of these matches, there's nothing stand out that you can say about them. But at the same time, they weren't terrible. They weren't, and there was nothing offensive or bad, but pretty decent match. Um, yeah, moving on. Um, to the six man main event uh, Super Dragon, Kevin Steen, and Akira Tozawa versus El Generico, Pac, and Masato Yoshino. Um, yeah, this was this was very very good. Obviously, it had to be. There was no way this was going to be anything less than than a, a fantastic match, and that's exactly what it was. It never really, in my opinion, got to the heights of where you can say it's one of the best PWG matches of all time or anything like that. Anything crazy, but it was solid. It was it gave it gave exactly what it what it said on the tin and what it should have gave you, which was hard hitting. Um, Super Dragon's psychology was fantastic. He always he always makes me laugh. He's absolute fucking gold dust as a heel, in my opinion. But um, I don't know. There's a bit too much. El Generico was getting beaten down and worked over for about ten full minutes in the middle of the match, which seemed to drag on forever. He was getting worked over by Super Dragon and Kevin Steen a lot, and there was a lot of Kevin Steen's sort of piss taking halfway through the match, which I don't know. It just seemed to drag a little bit. Obviously, people who uh, the few people that have heard my videos know that I'm a bigger fan of Kevin Steen I am, but I think there was a little bit too much of it in this match, a little bit too much of Steen sort of antagonising Generico and a slow sort of methodical offence that, I don't know, I don't think this match needed that at all, but I think Yoshino was 
massively underused. He, he had a little bit at the start and a little bit at the end. But as I say, in, during the middle chunk of the match, probably 10 to 15 minutes, it was basically Generico getting beat down, trying to make a tag. Um, and that was, that was all it was. And instead of quick fire tags and different combinations in the ring at the same time, that's all it was. And I think Yoshino, if you're going to bring, again, as I said with Ricochet, if you're going to bring someone like Masato Yoshino in, who's fantastic, absolutely fantastic offence, um, then you need to utilise him to the best of his ability. You need to get your money's worth out of him. And in my opinion, I don't think they did at all here. Um, and the same with Tazawa as well, maybe to a lesser extent, but I don't think we got enough Tazawa. It was obviously, anybody that had watched the match, it's crazy to complain about anything. I am nitpicking because it was a fantastic match. The end, the end sort of five, five, six, seven minutes were fantastic. People it like finishes getting hit left, right, and centre. Um, high impact stuff, but I think the, the standout guy in this match was probably Pack, in my opinion. I think he, I don't know, the last time I saw Pack was, well, it must be at least a year maybe since I've seen him, and it, it's the amount of muscle he's packed on, no pun intended, um, but he's put on a load of sort of muscle mass, and I don't know, I don't know what he's been what what he's been doing, but he's a lot bigger than when I last saw him. Um, and yeah, I think he it look it helps. I think he could be. I don't know. I don't know if the WWE would take a chance on him, but I think that now he's put on a bit of muscle and he's a bit more of a he's got a bit more of a WWE look. I think he could definitely be considered as a WWE type wrestler. Um, as a high flyer, definitely. And of course, he's English, which WWE is always looking for breakout English stars, Wade Barrett, etc., which sells tickets in England, sells pay per views. So, yeah, but he, he was the, the sort of small amount of time he had in this match on offense pack, he, he looked tremendous and no real botches from him, which that was one thing I was always associated with pack was stupid botch. Uh, high flying and stuff like that but in this match he was pretty solid and yeah good stuff so that's about it um, as I say nothing terrible but certainly didn't live up to my expectations and I'm pretty sure anybody that watches at the show will probably agree um, I don't know I can't really but and I would say the one thing coming out of this show was that they underutilised the Japanese talent that they brought in in my opinion for the most part um, Yoshino Tozawa um, and I'd, and certainly Ricochet, uh, the Ricochet Shima match against Rockness Monsters was pretty much a, a bit of a a bit of a letdown, I would say. But yeah, and like I say, it was okay. Um, the main event, the eight eight person tag team match, and the Naruki Doi versus William Mack match, are the three matches that I would say to watch probably off the show. But yeah, cheers for watching. See you later.